Many content creators in the Genshin community have been very vocal about their dissatisfaction with the lack of endgame content, especially now that the honeymoon period of the new Inazuma content has ended. Now this complaint won't necessarily be relatable to everyone of course because content creators can't just play other games or else their income can be negatively affected, but it still stands that dedicated fans of the game that have been around since day one are feeling more and more burned out given the game's current state. Even if it does appear that Mihoyo's target demographic is the casual player base, I do think it is in their best interest to try and also sometimes cater to the so-called hardcore players. So that's why I was extremely surprised when they unveiled the headliner event for version 2.2, Labyrinth Warriors. In my eyes, this game mode checks off many of the boxes for what enticing endgame content entails, yet they actively made the decision to make it a limited time event. Mihoyo not taking this opportunity to address the endgame issue really makes me feel like they don't care about it at all. First, let's take a step back. What makes it possible for a game to be endlessly fun? To answer this, let's look at some of the types of games that have stood the test of time. With competitive games, you're always working towards improving and inching closer to that coveted skill ceiling, but also having different teammates and opponents to play with makes every match a different experience. With sandbox games, there's seemingly infinite possibilities in terms of what you can do, so as long as you have the drive to do more, you can. MMO-style games have uniquely deep immersion and social aspects. And although the gameplay can't be entirely monotonous, these games still tend to have a bit of mindless grind to them. So to answer the original question, what makes it possible for a game to be endlessly fun, I would personally say that the answer is a combination of variety and rewarding payoff. The issue is that the games I mentioned were built around these principles, and the specific methods taken don't really work for a game like Genshin. For example, I'm a firm believer that Genshin should never have combat-based PvP because 1. the game's mechanics are not made for it, and 2. it would inevitably put players who spend more at an advantage over free-to-plays. So what can Genshin do to achieve some kind of similar effect? The answer lies in a specific classification of RPGs, the roguelike game, characterized by randomized dungeons to explore through, and death resetting all your progress with no checkpoints. But the latter part can be a bit harsh, hence the existence of roguelite games, which are the same in a lot of ways but have a system of progression where runs can provide something to be carried over into future runs to make it gradually easier. This definitely fulfills the criteria I mentioned before, variety in going through the different dungeons and rewarding payoff in getting more progress each time with the overall completion giving a grand sense of accomplishment. Given that Genshin features a combat system with lots of possibilities for different environments, enemies, buffs, and debuffs, it seems like a roguelite game mode would make for endgame with much more prolonged appeal when compared to the one and done twice a month type deal that the Spiral Abyss currently provides. But before getting in depth into Genshin, I think it's a good idea to touch on Mihoyo's other game, Honkai Impact 3rd. Not too long ago, back in August, a new permanent game mode was added called Elysian Realm, and as you can probably guess, it utilizes roguelite systems. In it, you complete rooms filled with random enemies, and receive a choice of buff from a selection of randomly generated ones. During the runs you earn currency, which can be used to upgrade said buffs or acquire new ones, and afterwards you get a separate currency that can be put towards making future runs easier. Every few rooms there's a boss, and completing a full run of course gives you the most rewards. There's difficulty options that can make your runs more challenging in a variety of ways, but in compensation the rewards are enhanced accordingly. Though well, this is all great, there are of course a few caveats that not everyone may be a fan of. First is the fact that rewards are limited on a per week basis. On one hand this makes sense because as we've seen with Genshin fishing and refining the catch weapon, if you give players the ability to grind something to completion in one day, they will. And then once they don't have that as an incentive any longer, they get bored and leave. Inversely though, the situation might arise that people want to continue playing, but they force themselves to wait a week so as to not waste their own time. Another core part of Elysian Realm is its harsh difficulty. Because of all the random elements which are made to make it more fun, as a consequence, guides become significantly less relevant. Wailing out on money for better teams and gear, or wailing out on time invested for the perfect combination of randomized conditions is key to completing the hardest difficulties. Some players will enjoy the challenge and look to optimize in any way possible, while others may decide it's not worth it to even try. Like with many things in many games, it seems nearly impossible to try and please everyone, 
but as long as the core gameplay is fun and enjoyable to do and gets relatively consistent support, issues that players may have will be less prominent. I usually don't like comparing Honkai to Genshin because I acknowledge that they are fundamentally different games and are developed by two independent teams, but for the Elysian Realm, I really do feel like a similar game mode would function very well in Genshin, and it seems like the Genshin development team agrees to a certain extent. Although we don't have access to it quite yet, during the 2.2 special program, we learned about all the important details regarding the Labyrinth Warriors event. Its core aspects include the following. Choosing two parties of four, one for combat and one for support, presumably encouraging experimentation with different setups. You can set three different Shiki Fuda buffs beforehand that can be utilized during combat in a variety of ways, including summoning a spirit to independently deal damage and straight up buffs to your team. There's five different levels, each containing multiple rooms filled with random enemies. It seems that after completing a room or set of rooms, you are presented with a selection of even more different types of buffs that can be acquired using the battered Cheeky Fuda currency, and the damaged replicas currency can net you even more buffs. Of course, this means that this game mode incorporates the roguelite elements that I've been talking about. But here's the thing, as far as I can tell, this mode certainly has potential, but just straight up making it permanent instead of a limited time event won't make for the perfect solution to Genshin's endgame content problem. I think we can all agree that completing Spiral Abyss is a pretty straightforward task. Not necessarily easy, but straightforward. Under the condition that you have decent team setups and character builds, you can simply follow a guide and see success. But the thing is, it does have a random element to it, the selection of a benediction of the abyss on each chamber, which changes daily. But there are two reasons why the implementation of this feature is a failure. First is that there are some options that are way too superior to others. Maybe if the goal were simply survival, then taking extra resistances could be worth it, but the goal of a faster clear makes increased damage always better. This is compounded by the best buffs applying to the whole floor, while the worst buffs only work for that specific chamber. Second, these buffs 9 times out of 10 are not relied on to make or break the run. I guess this can kind of be a good thing though since nobody would want to wait a whole day just for a new selection of buffs. So anyways, this feature, which is meant to diversify your Abyss experience, really doesn't accomplish that goal. The reason I bring this up though, is because I have a feeling Labyrinth Warriors could partially suffer the same issue. It isn't time-based, which is good, but it doesn't seem to have a selection of difficulty aside from the different levels, which look like they will get slightly harder as you move up. With a minimum adventure rank requirement of 30 and recommended level of only around 60 though, I think it's safe to say it will be fairly easy. That's not bad in and of itself, but it's just hard to justify experimenting with all the different ways I can upgrade my team when they will one-shot enemies regardless. I mean, I guess I could force myself to use my underleveled characters, but my characters that are strong I put a lot of time investing into and would like to use them. And although they probably will have bonus rewards for getting higher scores, historically these rewards have not been worth getting. Fun gameplay contributes to the feeling of payoff, but games like Genshin need worthwhile rewards to make the experience feel completely fulfilling. While a low barrier of entry is admittedly nice for casuals who don't have as much time on their hands, it also makes one of Labyrinth Warriors' most interesting features probably not worth exploring to its fullest. So because of this, it's pretty evident that this event is yet another one made to make the casual audience happy. It's such a shame because it does seem like it's almost there. Maybe with some additions like extra difficulty options or more unique rewards, and with some continuous support in the future, it could be the endgame content that people are craving for. Yes, it would obviously require more time and effort to flesh out, but I think it would be worth it. Could this possibly be a test run to see if people like it? It's possible, but because they chose to make it limited time, and seeing as how they have treated limited events in the past, I am not hopeful that they will develop this into a permanent mode. And I am hard pressed to find another type of game mode that would encapsulate the same potential for satisfying repeatable gameplay as the roguelite system. So if not for now, when will we get new endgame content? To be honest, probably not for a long while. Mihoyo has made it especially clear with Labyrinth Warriors that it is not a priority for them. I can understand why they want to appeal to the majority audience of casuals, but it really feels bad for the dedicated player base. I would like nothing more than to be proven wrong, but right now I can confidently say that Genshin doesn't care about endgame content. That's all for this video, and as always, thank you for watching.